The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to a special OAA Now girls basketball preview show here. Um, I am Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminus on OAA Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on on YouTube. Um, last week we talked about the, this week we t- we talked about the boys just recently. Um, now we get to talk the girls, of course. Um, this year the girls, this year the girls talk about um the girls usually start first, but you know what the um MHA changing it up because of the NCAA tournament with Michigan State um using it as a possible venue site um. The boys are starting off first, and now and then the girls they start off um later in the later in the um week the week after. So a lot of changes in this division. Obviously, of course, the girls went four divisions this year, um instead of the usual three. Um, really curious to see how the divisions are going to look, especially when you look at the teams that are in this division. So let's go. We're gonna go from the gold first here. We're gonna go gold, blue, white, and red. So. You know, we're gonna start with that order, um with with um with um the preview for the division. So let's look at our first team here. Of course, it's gonna be the Knights of Oak Park. Um they got a new coach in there. Um so really curious to see how um Oak Park does. And I think, you know, last year this was a team that won ten games. Um, you know, Chantel Corson stepped down. Um they got a new coach in there. Um I do have them. It's on my blog at I'm sagging of a forty six fifty at blogspot.com. Um, so when you look at the Knights, um, a lot of question marks. I mean, like there's a lot of question marks. I mean, when you look at Oak Park, I mean, like, you know, you don't know what you're going to get from the Knights. And I think that's going to be the big question mark that I have with Oak Park is can they, you know, you know, put it together like they did last year. Because it was really rocky early on, and then la- and then they put it together last year. Um, unfortunately for them, they ran into a very good Berkeley team. Um, so when you look at when you look at Oak Park this year, a lot of question marks coming in this year for them. Um, when you look at the Knights, um, then our next team we got here is the um, Ferndale is the Ferndale Eagles. I mean, when you look at the Eagles here, um, you know, new coach and Keith Paris, he's he did a really good job. Um, Getting them eight wins last year, um, you know, I, I, I kind of wish he'd play a lot more games than 15. Um, I think he's done a really good job of that. He really toughened up the non-conference, which is really interesting considering, you know, but then you look at the team that Ferndale's got. I mean, like, they got a lot of proven talent back. Um, I'm very curious to see where the program goes with them. I mean, like, program strength is a big question mark for me with them, and I think that's something to really, really look at with Ferndale. Um, is can they put together program strength? That is the big question I have with Fer- with them with Ferndale as program strength. I mean, they're expect to be one of the top contenders in the division this year. Um, and I think their district's very manageable. Obviously, got them. Hazel Park is in there. Even though yeah, Birmingham Detroit Country Day is going to be the team to beat in that division in that district. But I think they got a sh- you got a, yeah as good enough chance as anybody. To do really well. So, Ferndale, I expect them to make the next step. I think the next challenge for Coach Paris is going to be is can he build the program? You know, not just one team. I think maybe you have your sub varsity programs. If he can do that, then I think Ferndale has a great chance to be very successful this season. So, a lot to really look at with them this year. Um, I think Ferndale, they could be a sleeper to watch in this division. So, Really excited to see what they have this year. And then let's look at um, Avondale. I think this is a team that I'm really high on this year. Um, Avondale made a big move this offseason, getting um, Morgan McPherson from Adams this offseason. He transferred over to Avondale. So when I look at Avondale this year, um, there is a lot of expectation, a lot of opportunity when you look at the Yellow Jackets this year. So when I look at Avondale and I talk to Coach Roy Christman, you know, about this team, there is a lot of expectation, a lot of excitement when you look at the Yellow Jackets this season. 
The coach of the Yellow Jackets, Coach Roy Christman here. Coach, um, obviously when you look at Avondale, um, last year was a rough year for you guys, um, but this year you guys have a lot of expectations coming in this year. Yeah, for sure, we got a lot of girls coming back. Um, last year the team was pretty much sophomores, two seniors, so it's good to have a recurring group of girls coming in, coming back, working hard in the weight room. Excuse me. In the, the weight room, working hard, and, and we're just looking to compete. Um, when you look at it, of course, you do return a lot of talent. Obviously, you do have the guards coming back. You do have a transfer coming in from Adams. So how, is, how has everything been gelling over there for you guys? It's been great. We actually went to a team camp with the girl from Adams. Uh, so they got time to bond there. We do a lot of things off campus uh, as far as they go to movies. Uh, they do a lot of stuff together. So as far as chemistry, we're going to be we should be great. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Expectation is to win go, get out of go, and build from there. Thank you really much, Coach. Appreciate it. You ready to go, Corey? Let's get ready. Avondale is going to be really interesting to see how this team goes. And I think, obviously, for Coach Krishman, um, I think this team's going to be really, you know, they're going to be solid. I mean, Mass and Many Weathers, I'm curious to see how she does her junior year. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how this team grows, how this team adjusts. And I think Avondale could surprise some people this year. I mean, they could. I mean, their schedule is interesting. Um, I, there's a reason why they're one of the favorites in the division. And I think they're going to do really well this year. Um, when you look at, of course, Avondale, I think they could do really, really well this year and turn that, um, that record around. I mean, like, they're, they're asleep in their district, and I think they're one of the favorites to win this division this season. So, a lot to look at with Boompy Hills. Uh, a lot to look at with Avondale this year, um, this season. So, a lot to really look at. Of course, Avondale lost the division last year to Boompy Hills. Of course, Boompy Hills. Um, now up in the white division. So we're going to talk them in a couple minutes. So, but back to Avondale, I think this team could be in for, for a good year. I really do. Um, let's look at now Pontiac. I mean, when you look at the Pontiac Phoenix last year, it was a rough year for them. Um, 0-20, virtually playing seven freshmen. Um, it was tough for Coach Corey Lett. Um, when you look at the Yellow Jackets, uh, I don't look at the Phoenix. Um, you look at Pontiac, I think this, this could be a, this could be a the start of something special for Pontiac here. So I caught up with Coach Lat to talk about the state of the Phoenix when you look at um Pontiac this upcoming season. I got the coach of the Phoenix, Coach Corey Lett here. Coach, last year was rough on you guys. I know you had a lot of freshmen last year. So talk about how everything's been going this off season for you guys today. So the off season was a good, interesting one for us. We did have a lot of freshmen, so that, and it's, it's good to have a good core that sticks together. And when you're young, you have a lot of mistakes to correct. This year coming in, we got a couple of pieces of additional added to us. We had a young lady move from Alabama that's gonna help us out a lot. It's gonna be a senior. Um, we have a, a freshman who's coming in that hasn't really played too much basketball, but he's a hell of an athlete. So we're really looking forward to the season. And, being able to compete. Talk about obviously, you know what I mean, like um, last season, it was rough. I mean, like, yeah. but um, now you have a chance. How's the, uh, have you thought about doing a sub varsity program with the JV and the freshmen? Yeah, so we're, we're working on this right now. Uh, unfortunately, the piece is with, you know, with basketball, even girls basketball, it's just hard to get girls to come out. Um, we do have some core pieces that came from our eighth grade team, our eighth grade program last year that are freshmen out. So if we can establish the JV program, we're definitely going to do that. If not, we're just going to keep the core group of girls and ask ourselves on the bench whenever our, our uh, starters need reserves. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Uh, you know, our backs are against the wall. We have nothing to, to go for at this point. We are going to be competitive. Every game that we step on the court, we seem to be you know, neck to neck to the team playing, or we should be winning. That's my expectation. Thank you really much, Coach. When you look at the Phoenix this year, a lot of, I mean, like you look at, of course, the, um, you know, obviously having a struggle last year and it was a struggle. And the challenge for Pontiac this year is how, is it, I mean, how is year one going to turn to year two? Obviously, year two, you expect that big jump. And I expect that expect Pontiac to have a really big jump this year. 
the district's difficult when you look at a course in there. You have like teams like Clarkson and Lake Orion are both in there. And of course, both those teams are really, really good um, when it comes to depth and program strength. So challenge for them come postseason time will be those two teams, um, obviously. Um, but for Pontiac, it's just taking one game at a time and then like building competence. And I think they're going to do that this season. So a lot of excitement over there at Pontiac this season for Coach Corey Lett um, to um, put everything in play for Pontiac. I mean, everything's coming together for them. Obviously, they're going to play at Adam Side Green Gym. Of course, they played at Pontiac Kennedy last year because the gym was going through renovation. Um, so a lot of excitement when you look at Phoenix um, this upcoming season. And then you have the Eagles of Ferndale University. Of course, last season was really rough for the Eagles and Coach Brianna Rowe. Um, so when I look at the Eagles, um, a lot of exp a lot of, you know, a lot of experience, some experience coming back. So I taught up with coach Brianna Rowe to talk about the Eagles and their, um, you know, and of course, um, what to expect for them heading into the year in, um, in year two under coach Rowe. The coach of Ferndale University, coach Brianna Rowe here, coach, um, last year was a rough year for you guys. So how was he? How's everything been for you guys? Uh, it's been it's been good. The girls have been in the gym. They've been really excited about getting in, getting better. Uh, so we're progressing. Um, talk about the expectation level for um, Ferndale University. Obviously, you expect to be better this year. Um, so what is how has everything been going there over at um, Ferndale U? Uh, we've been in the weight room more, so we definitely expect the girls to be a lot stronger, a lot tougher, um, score more around the rim, um, and definitely just just compete. So they're, they're excited. I'm excited. Uh, just be a good year. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Uh, expectation is definitely to win, hopefully be 500. That's, that's the expectation. Thank you really much, Coach. So when you look at the Eagles this year, and I think there's going to be a lot of expectation for Ferndale University, as, you know, I know Coach Rowe wants to get to 500, um, and it's not going to be an easy, it's not going to be easy being around 500, but I think they got a chance to be around 500, and I think, Ferndale University, they got a great chance to do really well this year. And, you know, when you look at the division they're in this year, um, I think that the vi I think the goal this year is going to come down to Avondale. Um, Avondale and Ferndale, I think right now you're obvious top two teams. I think Oak Park right now is third. Um, Ferndale University, Pontiac, but this could all change. So, you know, so when you look at the division right now, I mean, it's Avondale and Ferndale right now. Um, I'm curious to see with Ferndale, the games – Games played, obviously. They toughened up their non-conference. Avondale's got a lot of experience coming back. Um, a lot to look at this year with them. So the goal, it could be a really interesting division this season between, um, you know, that should be a really interesting division to watch um, as we um, go along with the season this year. Let's go now from the gold to the blue here, of course. When you look at the blue here, um, obviously you look at, of course, a couple teams that came down from the red. You had um, you had a couple teams come from the white, and then of course you have Farmington. Of course, Farmington, you know, was a team that's been in the blue, and it stayed in the blue. And obviously, Coach, um, you know, Laura Guzman is no longer there. She is at Troy. So enter Natalie Nowak, and you know, with Nowak, it, it, I'm curious to see, you know, with Farmington this year, how she's going to build the program, and especially when you look at the Falcons, um how this team's going to look. They got some proven players coming back, but there is some, um, there is some question marks coming in this year at Farmington. So I caught up with coach, um, Nowak to talk about the, um, state of the Falcons. I got the new coach of the Falcons, coach Natalie Nowak here, coach, um, taking over for, um, Laura. Um, how has the transition period been going for you? So I think it's been really helpful that I'm a teacher in the building. So I was the JV coach five years ago before I stepped away to coach at Schoolcraft College. Um, so I know a lot of the girls. So I think that's been really helpful. I've either known them as players or as students. Um, talk about any returners. You know what I mean? I know you got some returners coming back. Um, I know you're gonna, you talked about being very young this year. So talk about your, how your returners are looking for you. So um, our returners, I met with a few of them the other day and just really talked to them about the leadership that we're going to need. So whether they played a lot of minutes last year or didn't, um, they still need to come in and be ready to lead a team. Um, again, we've got a lot of y young players coming in that I'm hoping are going to make an impact. So we need, we need our older players to lead them. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Uh, all right, my expectation is just to get girls in 
buy into the program, work hard, compete, and get better every day. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. Awesome. So when you look at Farmington this year, I mean, a lot of expectation. I mean, like, I'm curious to see how, for one, the program adjusts, obviously, the transition period. It's going to be really interesting to see how the transition goes over at um, Farmington. Um, I think being a teacher in the building is going to be huge for, for the kids, especially having Noak in there. So that'll help things. Um, obviously, last year, Farmington won 12 games. Um, they were 10-2 and two in the division. But when they've gone out of league, they've had some issues. I mean, like, when you look at, of course, the record last year, out of division was, you know, they, I mean, like, they were 2-8 and eight in the out of division. So, you know, so I'm curious to see how Farmington does out of division, and that's going to be the challenge for Coach Nowak this season. It's not more of in season. It's more going to be in the division. And then you have the divisions more tougher this year. Um, when you look at the teams that are in there. So a lot of teams that were in the red, um, a lot of teams were in the white last year. I mean, it's going to be a tall order for um, Nowak and um, North Farmington this year. And, and, and Farmington this year. Um, and they're in a really tough district, obviously, with um, North Farmington, West Bluefield, Farmington with Mercy, and Birmingham Marion in there. That is really brutal. So, you know, a lot of challenges await for Nowak and Farmington this year. Um, I, I think it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes for them. Um, so something to really, really watch for this year when you look at um, Farmington this upcoming season. Next, we have Rochester Adams here, of course. When you look at the Highlanders, um, I talked to Coach um, Joe Malberg back in June. Obviously, we talked about Faith Zoas a lot. Um, she's going to be the key player this year for Adams, and I think they got a nice blend of young talent. Um I will have the um I will have the podcast up with me and Coach Malberg from June. It'll be on the blog at Saginaw by forty fifty at blogspot.com. But when you look at Adams this year, I think, you know, I think they're gonna be better than people think. I mean, I think Malberg's done a really good job. This is year three for him over at Adams, and I think this is gonna be really interesting to see how um, you know, this team has progressed. I mean, Faith Zolas, I've seen it during the um off season, the summer program she's had a really nice year for Adams um I think I think she's gonna be the key for Adams um to see how they do this season um they're in a really tough district um when you look at the teams in there with Romeo Utica Eisenhower Rochester and Stony Creek um those are not going to be easy matchups for um Adams this season so you know when you look at the Highlanders right now I mean like you know I think they're going to be a solid team this year so it'll be something to really really watch for um, with them this season. Um, next, we have Troy Athens. Of course, last year for them, injuries really derailed their season a year ago. Um, Coach Stacy Klump, he, she did lose a ton of experience, but she does have some experience as well. You look at players like Abby Malone. Um, you know, I think, I think, I think Alex Link's another one. I think, you know, and I think um, Troy Athens, they're going to be in line for a better year. I think the key for them this year is to stay healthy if they do. I think they're going to have a much better year. So when you look at Troy Athens this year, a lot of excitement for them. Um, I think that's going to be the key this year, um, especially when you're trying to turn around a 2-11 and record in the, in the white last year. Only won in seven games. Now, they did lose a tough one last year. I think it was the Utica Ford last year um, in the um, district semifinals. Um, and, and it'll be really interesting to see how this pro, how Troy Athens does this year. I'm really curious to see how um, this program is going to look this upcoming season. So a lot to look at with, um, you know, a lot to look at this upcoming season with um, Troy Athens and Coach J.C. Klump. I think there's a lot of expectations for them this upcoming season. Um, next we have is the Berkeley Bears. Um, when you look at the Bears this year, um, new coach coming over there. I mean, Coach Clay Shaber takes over the program. Um, and I've heard a lot of positive when you look at the Bears. I mean, like, the program, he has really built program strength at Berkeley. They're having a freshman team there. That's a big deal. I mean, when you build program strength, you keep a lot of kids in the program. That's a good, that's a good recipe for success. Um, and the players are happy over there to what I've heard over there at Berkeley. Of course, um, they do return a really good player, Mavin Nolan. I'm really excited for a couple other players. Nadia Watt, I'm really excited to see how she does over there at Berkeley. Avery Wintergarden's another one. I mean, like, there are others as well. I mean, Berkeley, to me, 
could be a serious sleeper in this division because of who they got back. And and you have a proven leader in Mave Nolan, um, who I think could be in for a monster year. I mean, I really think Mave Nolan could be I, I mean like I think I think she I mean like if I had to do like an all league type thing right now early on preseason, I would have to put Mavi Nolan on that list because I think that I think she's that good of a player. She's a heck of an athlete. I mean, I'll tell you that much right now. I mean, like, um, but I think the Bears could be a team to really watch for under Coach Clay Shaver. If this team is motivated, yes, they got a tough district coming up. They have Detroit Renaissance in there. You have Detroit Mumford in there, and that's not easy, um, obviously, because considering you have Detroit Renaissance in there. Um, but I think, you know, let's not forget, two years ago, this same program did upset Detroit Renaissance um, in the um, district final last year two years ago in Detroit and a couple of those players, some of those players are still on that team. So when you look at the bears, you know, a lot of experience from that team. I think they could surprise some people this year in the division. I, I mean, they could be a sleeper to really watch for. I'm really, really high on this team. So you, you look at the bears, I think they could do really, really well this year um, with the talent they got coming back. So that's my take on the Berkeley bears. Um, let's go down to Southfield arts and tech. I mean, when you look at the record last year, four and sixteen, in the I mean like two and eleven in the red. You look at of course the teams they play. You play West Bloop, played Lake Orion, play Rochester, Stony Creek. You play in Clarkson. You're playing against Groves. You're playing against Troy. That's not easy. That is not easy. And I know Coach Shakita Coltrane loves offense. She loves the score. I mean her teams love the score. You look at players like Kamira Page. You look at you look at Christian Banks. I mean, you look at I mean, their guards are really good. There's no doubt about it. But there's one thing that I have a question with when it comes to A and T, and that's their defense. I look at the game last year against Belleville when they gave up 90. They gave up 90. That's not going to win you games. You can have all the good offense you want, but you got to defend people. So that's going to be my challenge for Coach Coltrane and her team this year is defensively. You have got to, you know, you got to stop people. You can't just go like, you can't just go run and gun and basically just, you know, you, you score on one end and then the other side scores and you go back and forth, back and forth. You know, you got to win games defensively. Defense wins championships. So that's my challenge for A&T this year. And for Coach Coltrane, you got to get some defense in that program. Defense wins championships. Offense, you can win your games, but defense wins you championships. <laughs> and that's the question I have with A&T this year, is defense. Defense, defense, defense. Describe if, if A&T, it can score a lot of points this year, but you have to defend people. That's what you have with A&T this year. That's the question I have with Coach Coltrane and her team. Is defense, defense, defense. So that's the big question I have this year with a and Is you can score a lot of points. They're going to score a ton of points this year. I mean, but it's, a, it's the other side of the ball. It's the defensive side of the ball. Can this team stop people? That's the big question I have with a and Because, you know, what would happen if a team who is as defense first heavy stops you and, and it shuts your offense down, you know? then you're basically stuck. So, you know, you're stuck in a situation like that. So, you know, so if you're A&T this year, defensively, you, you got to win games defensively. You know, and I'm not sure if I can trust this team defensively this year. I don't know if I can trust A&T defensively. That's the big question I have with them this year. And and you can see it in the blog at sangway4650.com, boxspot.com. Um, defense, the big question I have with A&T this upcoming season. Now let's go to a team I can really trust a little bit more um, defensively, and that's the Troy Colts. Um, Troy last year was rough. 3-19, and very young team. Um, you got some proven players in, the, in, the, on the, in that program, um, you know, led by Diamond Prince. You got Olivia Sprangler, Reagan Sider, Carly Higginbottom. New coach comes in, and Laura Guzman takes over the program. Um, has done a really has led Troy to a really strong summer. Um, so I caught up with Coach Guzman to talk about how everything's been, you know, and all the um, you know, how everything's been for Troy 
um, coming into the season. So here is my interview with Coach Coach Guzman. We got the coach of the Colts, Coach Laura Guzman here. Of course, um, Coach, um, taking over a team, you know what I mean? Like you are very familiar with the coach doing softball. So how has the transition been for you guys? I think the transition has been pretty seamless. I think the kids are excited and eager and they've been showing up. We have great numbers. Um, I think they're just ready to work hard and kind of show people what they're capable of. So I think it's, it's been pretty seamless so far. Talk about obviously the transition. Obviously you got you, you got a lot of proven players back. You got Reagan, you got Diamond, you got um, Carly. I mean like you got others as well. I mean like Olivia Sprangler is another yeah. one that's been mentioned as well. So talk about how that transition has been going for you. I, I think it's great when you have a core of returning players, but I think what people are going to be most shocked of are like a lot of people that you didn't, didn't mention um, are a lot of girls that I think are ready to show everybody else, like here's Troy basketball, I and mean, we're not just five deep. Like We could probably play about 10 or 11 girls. So I think that's the most exciting part. Um, having those returners obviously really, really helps, but I think players, you know, one through whoever we put on the varsity team are going to be able to come in and are going to be able to play. So I well, think that's a big, that's a big plus. What is your expectation this year, Coach? I think we're going to try to, like, to win our division. I think we have enough kids to compete with the talent, and I think the kids are buying in and they're super gritty. Um, I think they're going to surprise a lot of people, so I'm excited for that. Thank you really much, Coach. You're welcome. Not a problem. Yeah. So when you look at Troy this year, Troy to me, people look at who do you think could win the division? Is it Troy? Is it Southfield? Is it, you know, is it Berkeley, um, Adams, Athens, you know? I think Troy, to me, when I look at it on paper right now, I would trust Troy right now in this situation because of the proven experience. Now, yes, Southfield Arson Tech's got Kamara Page. They got Christian Banks, um, Jordan Ushery. I mean, but when you look at Troy, obviously they got Diamond Prince. You have... um. You have um, Libby Sprangler, you have um, Reagan Zider, Carly Higginbottom. Um, they got others in that program as well. Um, and also they're well coached under Laura Guzman. Um, I think the transition period go has gone really well over there at Troy. They she's built program strength there. She's got program strength. Um, this team, I mean, they took their lumps in the red. I mean, anytime you go 0 and 13 in the division, that's not easy at all. I mean, that's not fun at all. And you know, it was rough for Troy. I mean, they lost to Seaholm last year in the postseason. I was really shocked that they were upset by Seaholm in the um in the first round of the district. And, you know, but when you look at the year Troy had, I mean, like, I think Troy this year is going to be much better than people think. I mean, I'm, I definitely had Troy in my top 10 to start the year. Um, I think when you look at the blue this year, I think I think Troy's got a great chance to win the division. I just, I do, with the experience they got. Um, Southfield, I can't trust him defensively. I mean, that's going to be the one that, that's probably going to be the one that held, holds him back is their defense. Um, Berkeley, I think, is a sleeper. Athens, they stay healthy. Um, Adams, I think Adams is ready to take the next step. And then Farmington, you know, I think Farmington, you know, going through that transition period. Um, but I think, you know, anybody can win that division. I think the blue can, it, blue looks extremely competitive this year when you look at the division this year. Um, how everything is looked up in that division. So really, when you look at the blue this year, it could be anybody's division. So that's something to really, really watch for. Um, when you look at um, when you look at that division. So I think Troy right now, I would have to give Troy a slight edge a little bit when it comes, even over Southfield. Even though Southfield beat Troy um twice last year, um, but I just think that um, I just think that um, right now, I just think. I would have to put Troy right now a little bit over Southfield right now. So that's my early take in the division right now in the blue. But Berkeley, Athens, Troy Athens, Rochester Adams, and Farmington, they can they can also win this division as well. They're more than capable. So a lot to look at when you look at um that division this season. Let's go now from the blue to the white. Um, when you look at this division here, this could be very interesting. I mean, a lot of storylines in this division. Um North Farmington won the white last year, um, winning. Um, they went perfect last year, 23-20-0, um, made the district final. Actually, 22-0, and 0, um, won the, I mean, went 14-0 and 0 in the division. Um, but they lost to Farmington's Mercy last year, and they lost a lot of experience. So that'll be something to really watch for when you look at the Raiders, um, how this team's going to look, especially now 
Then they got a new coach in there, Coach Michael Allen. He takes over that program. Um, you got Harper Woods, um, who I think is going to have a bounce back year. Seaholm, fresh off a district championship appearance. Bloomfield Hills, obviously. Um, you know, up, going up from the um, blue to the white. So let's look at the let's look at all these teams. Obviously, let's start with um, let's start with um, the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks. So obviously, last year was a special year for Coach from Kristen Massey. Um, eighteen and four, winning that one. Took Groves to overtime last year in the in the first round. Unfortunately, they fell short. Um, when you look at Gro when you look at Bloomfield Hills, they do return the um they do return a very good big in Ruby Smith. They got Honor Barrett back. Um, uh, Ashley Fortner's back. Take the back. Ashley Fortner's back, and then they got um they got a couple others as well. I mean, like. I think it's Michelle Barnett's the other one that's back for them. So when you look at Bloomfield Hills, um, a lot of excitement for the Blackhawks this year. Moving up a division. Um, your district looks winnable when you look at it here. I think Troy's going to be probably going to be their toughest challenger in that division, uh, in that district. Um, so I think for Bloomfield Hills, I think this is the year for them to keep getting better as a program. They keep getting better. They're... They're rising. You know, I call Bloomby Hills like a rising giant. I mean, like, they have proven experience. They know how to win. They got depth. Well coached under Coach Kristen Massey. She's done a wonderful job of that program. I mean, like, you know, especially when they were in rough times. I mean, she's done a wonderful job just getting that program, taking the next step. And I think Bloomby Hills could be a team to really, really watch for this season. So, I think the Blackhawks could be a sleeper in this division. I mean, like, they could be. So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens um, in this division. Next we have is the um, is the Harper Woods Pioneers. I mean, when you look at the Pioneers last year, a good year. They had a nice year. Um, 12 and 8. Um, 8 and 6. Got a lot of experience coming back. Of course, led by Cecilia Peterson. They got a new coach. Um, kind of forgot his name a little bit, but... um. But um, I'll get it, you know, for the blog at sangamifortheblogspot.com. Harper Woods is a lot player returners returners coming back. Um, they could be in the conversation for the division crown this year. Um, I think Harper Woods, you know, with and they got a very good district. I think their district looks very favorable ever since going back down to um to um division two. I think you know that's going to help them out a lot. Having that division one experience is going to help them. Um, being in a really tough district last year. You know, it was tough for Harper Woods, but I think this year for them, <laughs> I think it's going to be the year. I think Harper Woods, you know, I think they're going to do some damage this year in Division Two. I think they're going to do some damage in their district, and I think they have a great opportunity ahead of them to really look at is, um, you know, I think they're going to make some noise this season. I think Harper Woods will make some noise this upcoming season. Um, Let's go now to... um. To see home, of course, when you look at the Maples, um, they have a star player in Addie Flynn. I mean, I'm really curious to see how Addie Flynn does this season for Coach Chris Manchester. They did lose a big piece in Shane Manchester last year. Um, so that's going to be a tough loss for them for, for them to replace. Um, they got other players as well. I think it can make some noise as well. So when I look at see home this year, um, I think the Maples, they could make some noise. I mean, yeah, they had a rough year. They were seven and sixteen last year. Um, three and eleven, but in the um in the white, but they made the district final last year. And, you know, they ran into a very good Birmingham Marion team. Um, so I'm curious to see how this team looks heading into the year. And I think that's gonna be the challenge. I think in that, and I think that's gonna be where I think's gonna be the um where I think the outlier is gonna be is can see home make that next step. Can Addie Flynn take that next step? And if she does, I think Seahome's going to go places this year. So, you know, when you look at the Maples, I think they could be in line for a nice year. I really do. I think the Maples are a team that could really, really make some noise in this division. So we'll keep an eye on that for sure. And then let's go um, Let's go now to um, North Farmington. Of course, I mentioned last year they had a great year last year. 14-0 um, in the division, 23-1 last year. Um, but they made a lot of changes last year. I mean, Coach Jeff Simpson no longer there. Um, Michael Allen takes over. Of course, Allen was at Lapeer last year. Um, 
You do have some proven players coming back, of course, led, of course, by Ashia Jihad. So I talked to Coach Allen about the um about the Raiders um coming up in the um talk to him about the Raiders and here is my interview with Coach Michael Allen. We got the coach, new coach of North Farmington, Michael Allen here. Coach Avi, you come over from Lapeer. Um, how has the transition been going from Lapeer to North Farmington? Uh, it's been great. I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoyed my experience with Lapeer. Loved those girls, loved that community up there. Um, but I'm more than excited to be here and uh, I've gotten to know almost all of the girls, but some I'm still meeting and uh, I'm really looking forward to the season. The girls have been great to work with. They've been working really hard and uh, they deserve a ton of credit already, but we're hoping to make our mark even more as the season begins. Talk about um, Miss Jihad here, obviously, gonna be your best player this year. So when you look at you guys, um, you gonna how, 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 how is she gonna be a big part of your offense this year? She's extremely versatile. I mean, she's got an inside outside type of game and she runs the floor extremely well, has multiple finishes around the basket, whether it's in transition or in the half court offense off her dribble drive attack. Uh, she shoots the three, she's got post up moves. She can defend uh, pretty much all five positions, at least four out of the five. And so, uh, you know, but beyond that, her work ethic, her attitude, her dedication, her commitment. I mean, all of those things are great examples for the uh, younger players to follow and just uh, great, you know, uh, characteristics for her, for her life going forward. What is the expectation this year, coach? Expectation is to compete, improve, have fun, and win games. Mm -hmm. Thank you really much, coach. Thank you. Of course, that's Coach Michael Allen, the new coach at North Farmington. A lot of expectation this year for the Raiders. Um, you know, not a lot of expectation. I take that back, obviously, from last year. Obviously, you know, I mean, like, young team, different team. Um, Going to take some lumps this year when you look at North Farmington. Um, I expect the Raiders, you know what I mean, they're going to be competitive. But there is a lot of questions when you look at North Farmington this season. So, a lot of expectation. I mean, a lot of questions coming up. Not a lot of expectations. They, they're in a tough district as well when you look at, of course, with West Bloomfield, Birmingham, Marion, and um, Farm Tales Mercy in that district, along with Nor along with Farmington. So it'll be a really interesting to see how this goes for the Raiders um, this season. But a lot of um, here's see how the Raiders do this upcoming season. So let's go off from North Farmington to Groves. Of course, when you look at the Falcons last year, they had a star player in Caitlin Sanders. They had a really Gut wrenching loss to Birmingham Marion. I'm still, I'm still after this day, still trying to figure that one out. Um, and I know Coach Allison Heidi is as well. I mean, I still cannot believe how they lost that one to Birmingham Marion by one point at Birmingham Marion. So I caught up with Coach, um, with Coach Heidi to talk about the Falcons. Of course, Grove's a lot different team this year. Um, without, um, without Sanders. I'm really curious to see how J.C. Roy stands out for them. Um, so I caught up with Coach. Allison Heidi, talk about the Falcons. When you look at the season coming up for you guys, what is your expectations this year? Um, I said it a few minutes ago. I feel like we have some unfinished business this year. I'm returning five very strong seniors, and we played a very competitive schedule in the red last year. This year, moving down to the white, so I have high expectations. I think I would like to take some of those lessons, apply them to the teams we're going to play this year, and hopefully at the end of the year, not only be successful in wins, but also maybe go for a district. Obviously, you're in an interesting district this year. Um, I know it's not an easy one. So talk about your district a little bit, you know what I mean, when you look at the postseason. Well, it's a good question, but I, I want to answer it. I want to take it back because I don't want to look too far in advance. Um, I know it's kind of a generic answer, but truly, I want to focus on preseason first, then the league play, and then we'll get to the, the postseason in February and March. But um, we cross over with some teams in the red. So even though we're moving down, I anticipate a lot of these white teams to be very competitive. And also we're gonna play some West Bloomfield type basketball. You know, state runners up, they're gonna they're gonna make a great run and get us ready. So what is your expectation this year, coach? I would like to have a great year. You know, last year I always laugh because you make a plan and sometimes life just doesn't go as planned. So last year we had a plan. We wanted to have a really good year. I think overall, you know, emotionally we had a good year, but we didn't have a lot of chemistry. So we struggled with the wins and losses. 
this year we want to get it done on both both sides. I want the girls to have a lot of fun and I want to pull down some dubs. Thank you really much, coach. Thank you. When you look at Groves this year, the word on finished business, that is going to be really interesting to see how how this how Groves does in the division this year. How do they adjust to the division? And of course, how is this team going to be, you know, how they're gonna do? I mean, obviously they got some experience back. You got Cameron Little also back, as I mentioned to JC Roy. Um, they got some others as well. I mean, like program strength looks solid for them. Um, so that's something to really, really watch for with them Groves coming up this season. So that's a team I'm really high on this year that maybe makes some noise in this division is Groves. And I think they could make some noise this season. But I think when you look at the favorite, who the favorite in this division looks like it could be, it could be Royal Oak. Because when you look at the Ravens this year, they don't lose anybody. They didn't lose anybody. They have a lot of experience coming back. You look at players like, um, they got a ton of experience. And when you look at what Coach Brian Zapata has, I mean, when you when you don't when you don't lose anybody, that's usually a good thing. And this is a team that's coming off a really tough loss last season, the postseason, the Detroit Mumford, where they were in that game. So when you look at Royal Oak, you always look at what them is def they're a defense first program. They always have been. You know, and then and then you look at of course if once they get some proven athletes in there, oh, it's gonna be hard for it's gonna be hard for anybody for them to beat. So when you look at Royal Oak, um a lot of experience, a lot of proven experience when you look at the Ravens this season. So I caught up with Coach Brian Zapata to talk about that experience that the Ravens have this upcoming season. The coach of the Ravens, Coach Brian Zapata here, obviously, when you look at the Ravens last year, experience matters. And you got a, you guys got a boatload of experience coming back. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so I mean, it's a it's a nice thing, uh, especially when you have players that have been through uh, a lot of varsity games. Played so the two girls that I have with me here today, the uh, of the they <laughs> they both played, um, you know, varsity when we were up in the red division. So their sophomore year, we took some lumps, but we also played some really good competition. Last year, the white was obviously a tough league as well. Um, and so just gain experience, varsity games played, played a really tough schedule this summer. Um, and I think that's going to, you know, just benefit us. Like we're going to step onto the court and we shouldn't be nervous for any games because we've literally played, um, you know, there, there's nothing new that these girls haven't seen in terms of like what we're going to compete against, what we played against. I know we're getting a little bit closer. I mean, we talked about March a little bit. The yep. district came out and it's yep. a little bit different for you guys when you look at your district. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So like, I mean, we've been everywhere in terms of districts. We've been, you know, we've played more south with Detroit Renaissance. For years, we had Southfield a and Southfield Lathrop. They sent us to play Marion. The year that we did play uh, in a district with Cusno, they just went on to win a state title that year. Mm -hmm. um, so this year we're Burt East again. Uh, obviously Groves, who's in our league, is there, and then we've got some, you know, some Mac schools. Um, excited to see different different teams, and certainly feel like we can compete in that district. What is your expectation this year, Coach? I mean, without a doubt, we'd like to, you know, compete for a league, and we would like to win a district. Um, I, I think those when you, when you return all your starters, you return uh, you know 12 players. I think those are reasonable goals. Thank you really much, Coach. You got it, Sammy. Thank you. You want to do an interview, Bob? When you look at the Ravens um, this year, a lot of experience when you look at Royal Oak. And I think with Royal Oak this year, they got the experience. They have the proven experience. They have the talent. I think for them, it comes down, the question for me with Royal Oak comes is mental psyche. Do they have the mental mentality? If they can have that, then this team can be really dangerous this year. And I think they have that this year. So... You know, when you look at Royal Oak, um, a lot of experience, a lot of proven talent for sure. Um, it just comes down to here. If they can get that, it's just the mental psyche. If they can, you know, believe it can go up against some of the upper echelons of the red, um, you know, and win, you know what I mean? Then, you know, then um, I think Royal Oak could be a really dangerous team. I think they're a dangerous team come postseason time, particularly you have Warren Cousino in that district. I think they match up really well with the Patriots. Um, so... That'll be really interesting to see how that how that district goes in March. But I think if I had if I was a betting man right now, I wouldn't bet against Royal Oak. So that's what I'm looking at this year. I think the Ravens are going to be in line for a really special year in the White this year. So 
and, and also this upcoming season. So when you look at the division right now in the white, I still think Royal Oaks a favorite. I mean, Bloom Bay Hills will definitely be a team to watch. Harper Woods, I got some questions when it comes to depth with them. Um, North Farmton lost a lot of talent, but I'm curious to see how they how they how they do. Groves, we talk about unfinished business. That's going to be a team to watch for. Um, and then of course, Sea Home. You know they're always scrappy. Um, so when you really look at this division, um, anybody can win this division. But when I look at from an experience standpoint right now, I would just have to trust Royal Oak right now with what they got coming back. I mean, like I have Royal Oak ranked to start the year in my um around the OA poll. Um, they'll be on the blog at Saginaw for the blogspot.com. So a lot to look at when you look at the white division. Now we go to the red. Um, when you look at this division here, West Bloomfield, of course, um, went to this Division One state finals last year, had the majority of their team coming back. Um, Lake Orion, of course, won 20 games last year, lost nine seniors. Um, Rochester, you know, they have their, um, they have um, Alice Mack coming back. That's a big deal. Um, Stony Creek, new coach. Um, curious to see how, how they do with an experienced lineup. Um, Clarkston expected to be better this year. Oxford, of course, comes up from the white to the red. Um, so let's break this division down. Um, starting with Oxford. When you look at the Wildcats, um, you have, you have a lot of proven players coming back. You have Soapy Robb, Allison Huff, Sedler, and of course, Peyton Richter. Um, they did lose Miranda and Emco last year. Um, and then of course, Nevaeh Wood transferred, um, you know, she's at Lake Orion now. So, you know, so they'll, so two big losses for coach Rachel Breyer. Um, Emma, Bu Emma Bugs is going to be one that I'm really high on for, um, Oxford. Um, I think the Wildcats could be in line for a great year. I think being in the red is going to help them when it comes to their postseason, because I've noticed with Oxford the last two years, they ran into grand blank and they have not fared well against them. I know they got Davison and Lapierre both on the schedule this year. So when I look at Oxford, um, they've got a. I think the team they got to beat this year is Grant Blank because you look at, of course, if Oxford wants to make some noise in the postseason, I mean, a lot of people look at, at Oxford and say, okay, is it is the rivalry, you know, is it Lake Ori and you got to go by? Is it, you know what I mean? But I just think this year with this team, you, they got to go by Grant Blank because Grant Blank's in your district. I mean, they got a good team there. They got a new coach in there um, over there at Grand Blank. But I just think, I think Oxford matches them up really, really well. And you look at that district, you have Davison in there. Um, Lapierre is going to be okay this year. Um, Holly's on and off. So when I look at Oxford's chances, I think the Wildcats have a great chance to, to I think they got a great chance to win the district. I really do. Um, so that's my take on Oxford. I just think the Wildcats, they got a lot of experience. You have Richter. Huff Sedler, Rob, um, you know, they got Lexi, you got, you got Yankee, you got Lexi Yankee there. Um, they got, they got, they got, their, their, their bench is solid. I mean, like, but I'm curious to see how they're going to adjust having to replace Miranda with Emco. They got a deep bench, so we'll see what happens with Oxford. But, um, I'm curious to see how this team's going to look heading into this season. So, a lot to look at with Oxford going forward there. Next, we have is the um, Stony Creek Cougars. Of course, Stony Creek, new coach in Columbus, Williams. He takes over for Coach Callan James. Williams was an assistant at Utica, at Utica Ford. Of course, Utica Ford, we know, has had some really good teams. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how Williams does, especially having to replace a, um, a coach like Callan James who went 46-11 and 11 the last three years. So when you look at Stony Creek, you know, I mean, Williams has had a lot of success. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's had a lot of success. You do return some key players. You got um, you got Sarah La Prairie coming back. You got um, you got, I mean, you got um, I mean, like obviously with La Prairie, I think she's gonna have a big year. I mean, they got Izzy Avaj. Um, you know, obviously they got Merrick Schwabach as another one to watch. Um, they got others as well. I mean, like I think I think it's Sarah Fulkerson's coming back. I think um, but um. I think with Stony Creek, I think the Cougars, they could be good. But if they struggle this year, if they struggle this year, I don't know what to say. Because it could be a really interesting thing if they really struggle. I mean, last year they won 17 games. 
um, lost in the district um, semifinals to Rochester. Um, went nine and five, tied with Rochester for the division. Um, beat Rochester um, on, a, on a buzzer beater. Um, so with with Stony Creek this year, a lot to like with the Cougars, but also there's there's some question marks. Program strength is a concern when you look at Stony Creek. I mean, like that is a big concern when you look at the Falcons coming into the season. So a lot to be curious to see how this team will look this upcoming season. Um, let's go to West Bloomfield. I mean, when you look at the Lakers this year, um, making it to the Division One State Finals, um, losing the Rockford the way they did two years ago, they won, won a Division One State Championship. You do return both Davis sisters in summer and Nia Davis. You got um, Kendall Hendricks coming back. Um, they got some solid players as well. Um, Gabrielle Hale's one. I'm curious to see how she does this year for Coach Gerald McAllister. Um, you know, when you look at West Bloomfield, you're going to be motivated with the word unfinished business. Um, I, they're, they're no doubt the favorite in the red this year. There's no doubt about that. They're going to be the favorite. Um, my question for West Bloom is going to be the district, and I think that's the big question when I have for the Lakers is, can this team get by that district, especially with two Catholic League powers in that district? And that's going to be the challenge, I think, for West Bloomfield is, can the Lakers find a way to, um, you know, can the Lakers find a way, you know, to get by that district? If they can get by that district, then, you know, I think the path is path is smooth for them. So we'll see what happens with West Bloomfield. I think West Bloomfield is going to be very good again this year. Tough schedule, play a lot of classic showcases. Um, <coughs> so something to really watch for at West Bloomfield. Um, is I'm curious to see is the bench is going to be the key. I know Coach McAllister said they're deeper than they are last year. Um, and I think that's going to be really interesting to see um, is are they deeper? Because, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a lot of work on, the, on their starting five last year. Um, obviously got Destiny Washington at point guard. Um, that's going to be a big help, obviously. So when you look at West Bloomfield, you know, having to place one starter, um, I think the Lakers could be a team to really, really watch for this season. And I think they could be back at the Breslin this upcoming season. They have a more than a great chance to get back to the Breslin for the third straight year in a row. <laughs> Next, we have Lake Orion. Um, when you look at the Dragons, Coach Bob Bridges, um, he lost nine seniors last year. Rotin went to the regional final, won 20 games. Um, you got some proven players. You got Charlotte Peploski, Ryan Palaszczak, um, Izzy Walensky coming back from an ACL injury. You get Nevaeh Wood. Um, coming over from Oxford. Um, I think Lake Orion could be a really interesting team because you look at this team, they got a, they got a, you're going to have a young bench this year. Um, Lexi Strohshine's back. That's going to be a big, that's a big help for Coach Bridges. Um, <laughs> I think this Lake Orion team, I mean, like, you know, they're, they're going to be in, I mean, they're going to be down a little bit this year, but they could surprise some people. I mean, I think Lake Orion, when you look at the Dragons this year, this is, they're like a, they're like the great unknown. I mean, it's similar to the boys team. Um, just, you don't know what to expect from them. And, you know, obviously with the dragons, I mean, like it's going to be very interesting to see how coach bridges does this with this team. <laughs> but like I said, with the, with the, um, with the boys team at Lake Ori, the girls team and is, is in a similar boat. They're, they're the great unknown. So we'll see what happens this year with Lake Ori. So a lot to look at with dragons this upcoming season. <laughs> Next, we have the um, Clarkson Wolves. And when you look at the Wolves this year, last year was 13-11, and 11, lost Lake Orion District Final. Um, when you look at the Wolves this year, they've really toughened the schedule up. They got Emily Valencia coming back, got Eliana Roback coming back. Um, you got, of course, their JV team was solid last year. So I talked to Coach Aaron Good now about the Wolves coming into the year. And, and you look at, you look at Clarkson this year, they could have another really good year again this season. The Wolves, Coach Aaron Good now here. Coach, um, obviously last year, of course, um, made the district final. Um, talk about, obviously, everything you've been doing this offseason and what's your thoughts coming into the year? Yeah, we, uh, we attended a team camp up in Gaylord, played some good teams up there. Uh, Gaylord, Celine, and uh, did Crosswell Lex. 
did real well with them. Um, had a league that we did Sunday nights that we we did well with. We we lost to a good Frankenmuth team that's been together for a while, and uh, but we really competed. Um, you know, we we lost some key pieces. We lost some key pieces to injury last year before we even got going. Uh, but this year we've lost some key pieces. But I've got seniors coming back, and we're going to be really, really young. So, you know, I think it'll be a very competitive start at the beginning of the year. It's going to be challenging, but um, I expect us to do well. Talk about the experience factor. Of course, you do return Claire, you got um, Emily, and also Eliana. Um, talk about how those three have been doing this off season. Uh, well, uh, actually, Ellie's really just honestly, she's probably as healthy as she's probably been in about ten months. Honestly, she didn't get to do as much over the summer as she wanted to. Emily had a had a big summer doing travel. Claire's coming right off of cross country, so I, don't, I never have to worry about her being in shape. So uh, no, I think we're going to gel really well. Um, we don't have big girls. Um, we have a bunch of ankle biters. No offense. But, um, you know, we don't have a lot of big girls, but we'll compete and we'll play tough defense and we're going to try to play fast. What's so, your expectations here, Coach? Um, I'll be very honest with you. At 22 games this year, if we're in that 14, 15, 16 range, I'll be thrilled at the end of the year. But we're looking to get back to the district final and maybe play a, a game or two in regionals. We'll see what happens. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. When you look at Clarkson this year, you know, the district's interesting because you got Lake Orion in there. Of course, Lake o of course the district did not change. Um, you know, the um their district did not change. Of course, they'll be at water for Mott. You got Lake Orion and Clarkson, it'll be really interesting. Those two teams meet. I mean, they're gonna meet twice in the red, you know, most likely, but when you look at the indications right now, it looks like they could be meeting three times. So when you look at the Wolves this year, um, they got a tough schedule. I mean, they're not conference is brutal. Um, they do got to play Heartland, um, which actually Howell, I'll take that back. They got to play Howell, which is going to be tough. Um, you know, so I think Clarkston, you know, obviously, you know, you got Roback, you got Walker, you got Valencia, you know, if everything gels for this team, I think Clarkston could surprise some people this year. So we'll see what happens with the Wolves. I mean, this season, I think Clarkston could be, they could surprise some people. Now they don't have a lot of size, but. You know, they make up for their athleticism, so we'll see what happens with Clarkston this season. And then our last team we have is the Rochester Falcons. Of course, when you look at the Falcons, um, you know, you look at, obviously, with Alice Max, um, I think with the Falcons this year, they could surprise some people this year. Um, I think Rochester, you know, they do return. They do have a – their guards could be a question mark, but when I talk to Coach Bill Thurston about Rochester, I mean, like, obviously – you know, the play of Alice Mack, you know, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how um, how this team does this season. Coach of the Falcons, Coach Bill Thurston here. Coach, um, obviously last year, of course, winning, your first, winning a district championship. Um, talk about how that district championship has really impacted you guys. Uh, I think it's just a, it's a building point from where we've been. Uh, we've been building up to that point to get to the districts. And um, you know, we've been to the district finals since I've been here, the one in my fifth year. And I think that we finally got over that hump and we're able to to win the district. And now it's, you know, we've got there. Now it's, we look forward to moving forward from that, get to the regionals, win a game in regionals. Um, you know, just see if we can keep building off that. Talk about your bigs, obviously. I'm Kylie and Alice, um, obviously, but your guard situation, a lot of people look at that. Um, so. What is your initial thoughts when you look at a course? You have two very good, you have two very proven good bigs in them, Kylie and Alice, and then the guard situation. How is that guard situation looking for you guys? I think our guard situation is in pretty good shape. Um, you know, we got Caitlin, our senior, Caitlin Guala, our senior, um, Lucy Cook coming in as a junior. Um, we're bringing it up a freshman girl, um, Angela Sikowski, and. Um, bringing up Taylor Parsons to help with this too as a sophomore. So I think that our guard play, I think that it's going to be, everyone's going to um, underestimate what we're going to be able to do in that. But I think that uh, we'll surprise a lot of people with their play. What is your expectation to your coach? Um, I think our expectations are basically where we were last year with everything we're doing. Um, you know, people say that this is a rebuilding year for us, but I think being in the red and still being competitive and getting to the point where we're ready for districts, um, you know, that's where we ultimately want to be. 
So I think that we'll be uh, we'll surprise a lot of people this year. Thank you really much, Coach. Take it easy, Jay. When you look at Rochester this year, of course, you know, the guard situation, you got King Galal back. Um, really curious to see with Rochester with the guards. Obviously, you look at them. Um, now, obviously, everything's going to flow through Alice Max, obviously, when you look at Rochester is, you know, of course, Max has really improved her three-point shooting game a little bit. She's really been a solid inside, used her height. Um, I think the key for Rochester this year is going to be is, can those guards develop? If those guards develop, Look out. And I think if they do, this is going to be a very dangerous team this year. Um, so Rochester coming off their first district um, championship in a long while. Expect to make some big moves this year. District looks favorable. If they're going to have to go through Stony Creek and Edica Eisenhower, um, you got Adams in there. You got Romeo's also in there. So a lot to look at with Rochester this year. A lot of excitement when you look at the Falcons this upcoming season. All right, we're going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Wish everybody the best of luck this season in girls basketball. I will take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care and see you then. God bless them.